What's going on, Golf Addicts? The Tour Junkies podcast coming at you live on YouTube. And uh, yes, we are trying to compete with the national championship because we're Bulldog fans and we don't care. So we're here. I'm DB. Uh, we got Pat Perry with us as always. We're here to break down the American Express 2020. The American Express 2020. It. Drives me crazy these tournaments that don't have like some tradition. Why would they do that? Open golf ch- or championship? I don't know. Why well, wouldn't they call it the American Express Pro Am? Like that? That's what it is. Yeah. I don't. I don't understand that. Um. Yeah. I mean, it, even last year, I mean, even you know before it was the career career builder challenge. At least it was something challenge. Not just the American. Yeah, it is. It's pretty lame, but we're here to break it down. We're here to talk through strategy. I feel like there's going to be a good bit of strategy discussion tonight, um, as it is a, uh, a pro am, as it is, you know, a three round, fifty four hole cut. Um, it's just going to be a lot to navigate, and we are here for it. So thank you for downloading, listening, watching, whatever you're doing. We appreciate it. This episode brought to you by our friends at FantasyNational.com/tj. That is where we go to get all of our stats, all of our uh, all of our goodies. You know, um, it's it's where we go to get our, our ownership projections. It's where we go to get our stats, our tournament history, our recent form. It is all on Fantasy National. So if you're trying to win money at this, whether you're betting outright, playing DFS, playing in a one and done, a league with your buddies, if you want an edge, Fantasy National. Dot com is the only edge that we've used for now the last two or three years, uh, and we highly endorse what's going on over there. We know personally Moose. He's just a great guy. So if you haven't signed up, go ahead and do it. You can sign up weekly, monthly, or annually. And if you use our promo, which is fantasynational.com slash TJ, if you go to that website and sign up, you get 20% off any package that you choose. And then if you upgrade to the next package, you still get the 20% off. So it's quite the deal at Fantasy National. So all of our stats... That are that that we're going to talk about today. Uh, all of our course history, all of our recent form is going to come from FantasyNational.com/tj. So check it out, please. Um, we're going to have a good show tonight, Pat. We're going to we're going to get into this here in just a second. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about the Sony drama, the sweat that we had going into Sunday, and then for the chunk and run, uh, I'm excited. We are going to uh, pay a little homage to the cease and desist letter that Patrick Reed. Uh, sent to Brandel Chambly. We are going to tell you what what cease and desist letter we would send to a PGA Tour golfer and why. Uh, and then we're going to talk about two new things in each of our lives that we're enjoying. Just two random things that we're liking in life right now. Maybe they're, they'll be new to you too and you'll enjoy them. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll make your life better or maybe not. So it'll be a good time. It'll be a good show. Even though the national title is going on, I don't care. I've got my uh, my my vodka Lacroix and peach schnapps with a lime right here. Pat, what are you drinking? What you got? What's the podcast juice tonight? Uh, I've got. A, I'm I'm sort of. I've been consistent this year. Got a little uh, vodka with uh, a little ginger ale and uh, grape juice. So uh, as we call a transfusion, uh, that's what I'm going with. And just just being consistent. Being consistent this year. Well, we both had good weeks last week, so maybe we don't. You know, we keep doing this until the until the heater stops, which will probably be this week. But um, yeah, it, it, it'll. We'll get to that. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, I will say, you know, if you're missing the DraftKings uh, Tour Junkies After Dark episodes on DraftKings YouTube channel every week, you're missing out. Last week, me and Pat were both. Crap shows by the time we got to that. Uh, it was very entertaining. Uh, Pat was on the rosé. I was deep into the vodka. It was yeah, a good time. That's another thing I've been doing that's consistent is I switch to the rosé when we get to yeah. the DK Live show and uh, or After Dark. And it's, I mean, it makes all the difference in the world for the show. It really yeah, does. it's, I mean, it's quite tremendous. quite amusing. It's only a 20-minute show usually on, on DraftKings YouTube. Go over there and watch it and give it a thumbs up. And comment how much you like it. That would that would make us look good. We'd appreciate it. 
And shout out to the, the folks on YouTube right now who are watching live um, with the national title game going on, multitasking. Our, you know, some of the regulars, Kistler's in here, Little John, Jason Little John's in here. Your boy Marcus Griffin, who you played golf with last week uh, in Savannah. Marcus oh, is on. Yeah. yeah. Did, Great guy. You know, really we didn't boy. talk about it, but I got more questions from friends of mine here in Augusta about Marcus's SK7 standalone putter that was in our Insta stories. I got more people that were like, hey, was that guy playing with an SK7 with Pat the other day? <laughs> well, it was. I, I, I may have mentioned this on the show last week if we talked about it. I can't remember, but um, it was actually his father's. Um, right, right. It was not It was not his, but um, yeah. I was surprised. Like I thought that may be like an old trick that nobody had really seen or that everybody had seen already, but actually we got a ton of comments on Instagram about that, that butter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, you ready to get into this, man? I think so. New think show so. format. We're going to start with the course breakdown, key stats, strategy, and picks right up front. Pat is going to hit us with a lovely course breakdown that I know he's worked really hard on, but tell us what we need what. to know and no more. There, I don't want to hear anything is... we don't need to know. There is a lot of stuff to take in this week because, yes, I know, just just breathe, breathe slowly. It is a three-course week. It's the it's, – it's, <laughs> sorry, I know, I'm sorry, DB. I know, I'm, uh, yeah, it's – I hate these weeks where we get three courses, but that's what we got. You got 156 players in this field. Again, we're going to have a, a cut after – the third round, which is Saturday, DB, don't you don't need to choke yourself. Don't worry, don't worry. I hate, okay. I hate these multi-course things. Yeah, I hate um, the variance. So, yeah, it's it, there's a lot of it. Um, so yeah, they'll make the cut after Saturday. So these guys will get three rounds. You've got the TPC Stadium course at PGA West. You've got the PGA West Nicholas course, and then La Quinta Country Club is one of the other courses. So the stadium course is the which, main one. Which They'll Pat play. used to call La Quinta, La, La Quinta, no, the no, first no, La year. Quinta. La, Quinta, La Quinta, first year. First year of doing the show, 2015. 20, yeah, yeah, 2016. Pat going, God, I we're at La Quinta. Like, I used to mess up so many of these. This now time. now was, you know too much. Funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, there's always something. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. So the stadium course is the one that they will play uh, twice if they make the cut. Uh, they'll play that course on the final round on, su on Sunday. It is a par 72, playing 7,100 yards, uh, four par fives. Actually, let's just let's just go through all. Look, all three of these courses are par 72s. They're all playing around 7,100 yards. They've all got four par fives, and they all have Bermuda grass greens. Uh, so we saw the stadium course, at least, and the Nicholas course, at least, it overseeded with rye, which is basically just to make it look green and look good. Um, but I think that could factor in a little bit on how these greens putt as opposed to traditional Bermuda. But I am looking at Bermuda grass stats uh, for putting because it's pretty much all you can really look at. Par 5 scoring to me is going to be key. I mean, they're going to get 12 shots uh, at par 5s. And, and a lot of these par 5s are reachable in two. They're definitely That's definitely where you're going to be able to score. So I, I want those guys that are doing well in par five scoring i think pretty much anybody can win on this course i mean you look at the past history of winners we had adam long winning last year for the first time john rom swafford in 2017 duff in 2016 bill haas i mean none of those guys really outside of maybe outside of maybe rom are known as you know the guys that can really bomb it all that much so i don't think that you're necessarily looking at the bombers this week um i do think they, they as they always do they have some advantage but um I'm definitely looking at form. I think you want guys that are in good form. I mentioned this. I'm doing the the little Insta story uh, every week, which is quite an adventure. Pat, it tell them, tell the listeners what you what you learned recently about Insta stories. So you were so thrilled to let me know that you had, you had learned. Couple things. So I'm I'm learning about the hashtags and stuff like that that you got to put in there, and I didn't realize you could like take your your thumb and and pinch the hashtag or the if you add somebody and like make it smaller or bigger like you know i thought that was kind of cool and then today i learned that you can take like i love putting little pictures in there and the gifs and stuff or the gifs whatever you want to call it <laughs> this week it was um if you see it i had a tie on because I was, I was coming i was doing it in my work attire and so i had this little tie like kind of swinging back and forth and david was like you can make that bigger and i was like holy shit i can make that bigger <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> like all these little things on Insta Story that I'm learning are, are fantastic. But <laughs> one thing I learned from you today after you uh, I, I, you said, so I sent you the video and I said, okay, what do you think? And you were like, do you want my honest opinion? So that immediately makes me think, okay, I guess I got to redo this. And you sent me an audio recording, which is which was great. It was very good, very helpful. And you said ten of the last eleven winners of this event have played in Hawaii leading up to the tournament. So that kind of speaks a little bit to form. Um, I think you you gotta maybe be at least. I mean, I'm not saying all the guys I'm choosing played last week because they're not. And you'll see because my picks are a little out there this week. Just feeling it, feeling some. Oh wow. You want some out there picks. You got you got you um, had a good week under you last week, and now you're now you're kind of getting, getting you're kind of getting cocky. But, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm sure I'm missing some other stuff. I know I will let you. We have we always have good caddy information at uh, certain events, and this is one of them. So I'll let you divulge that information. But that is my breakdown for the American Express. Whatever. Yeah, in terms of our caddy insight from a 20-year caddy on the PGA Tour, um, also his player won this event uh, before. But, you know, said a lot of the same things you did. Mention that with the Pro-Am, you know, you definitely see the rough around the fairways and greens a lot less penal, um, you know, not that hard to navigate. He feels like the the bombers kind of keep bombing. Uh, you know, you hear some some talk about clubbing down here, but he kind of feels like they keep ripping. Uh, definitely felt like uh, form was number one. He mentioned form. If if he were to weight form, course history, and stats out of a hundred percent, he gave form a seventy percent nod. So speaking to that kind of Hawaiian edge that you just mentioned, playing the week before that or the two weeks prior at this at the century. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's a thing. I mean, we're still early enough in the season that we we have players who we haven't seen since maybe the RSM or or prior that are are back now. You know, shaking the rust off. I mean, that that's a real thing that players talk about at the Century. That's a real thing players talk about at the Sony. So I do think there's something to that. Not that a player can't come out and and you know have been grinding in the off season, but I think tournament golf is a little bit different. So. Uh, I do think there's something to that. I think that's a that's a theme that you'll notice in some of my picks is um, is guys who come in you know with with relatively decent form because you know you mentioned to me the biggest thing here is is the scoring. You mentioned how much scoring's going on and and we've had winners between 20 and 26 under the last five years. Patrick Reed won here in 2014 at 28 under. That is a lot of scoring. You mentioned the par fives. These guys are going to play 12 par fives. In the first three days, um, you better take advantage of those par fives. You better make birdies. You better make some eagles when you have the opportunity, and you better keep on going. And, and I think it's hard for even on easier courses, which all three of these courses are very easy. Your, your, your La Quinta and and the Nicholas course are definitely two of the e- they're they're easier than the Stadium course. But even the Stadium course is a scoring course relative to the rest of the PGA Tour schedule. So, you know. I just think shaking the rust off at an event like this that's a birdie fest is tough to do. So, I, you know, you you got to have guys that score here. Um, I definitely looked and weighted par five scoring um, over the long term. I looked at it long term. I didn't look at it short term. I went 100 rounds. Tell me traditionally long term who really takes advantage of par fives. I did look at strokes game putting on Bermuda over the last 100 rounds, but I, I do agree with you with, uh, with these greens – having some oversee they're pretty pure is what we've heard so far from from a caddy on the grounds they're pretty pure that they may be a little less grainy than some bermuda so i don't know that you're going to have true bermuda edge that maybe we had last week or you'll see in florida um so really and truly man i just want guys in form guys who can score uh definitely you know looking at at some ownership and and this is just one of those weeks where um you know with with the with with the guaranteed fifty four holes, you can take a couple of approaches. You know, just like every week, studs and duds. Uh, although that we'll talk about the top range here in a minute. Um, getting getting all six through the cut is still an edge, but it's not as big of an edge as uh, you know as you may have um, in a you know in a tournament where you're going to get those two extra rounds from your guys that make the cut. So. Um, 
you know, if you're playing if you're playing a showdown slate on DraftKings, you're gonna want guys on La Quinta or the Nicholas course. Those are the, your easiest courses. Um, you're definitely gonna want to pay attention to that. First round leader bets. Stay uh, stay tuned for some of those. And in the chalk bomb email this week, I may be back on some first round leader bets since we may have a little bit of an edge with players on La Quinta or the Nicholas course as well. Um, you know, I think that's an edge to be had. A lot of times you, you, uh, yeah, you, you want to pay attention to that. So, you know, we'll check the weather. I haven't looked at the weather. Pat, have you looked at the weather yet this week? I haven't even taken a look at it. I have not looked at the weather. Okay. Um, but, yeah. but I'm sure we'll mention it in the chalk bomb email for sure. And, um, yeah. And yeah, again, I mean, just remember it's a pro. You told me to stop the weather report like two years. I know, ago. I know, so I, know, I, didn't prepare I know. You're right, you're right. Weather, you were. But that 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 is a factor here. Um, you know, uh, that's a that's a factor. So, yeah, it's a pro am. So it's going to be super slow. The, the, they're in foursomes, two pros and two uh, amateurs. It's going to be super slow. You got to have the mentality to grind through it. You got to have the mentality to put up with these knucklehead amateur CEOs and. Uh, you know, it's it's tough. So it's going to be slow moving. The course is going to be set up a little more manageable. So, yeah, birdie fest. That's what it's all about. Uh, anything else to add to that, bud? I think that's all I got. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's get to it. Let's get to it. This top range on DraftKings, uh, we're going to give you three players at the uh, 9K range or above a cash play and a fade um, all right, I'll 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 start here. I'll start here. I I think I think I'm gonna. All right, I tell you what, I'm gonna start at the bottom of this range. Uh, my first play in here is one of my favorite plays, and it's gonna be Scotty Scheffler, who we saw just come out swinging um, off the Corn Ferry Tour, fifth place finish at the RSM, 18th at the OHL. The guy is course proof. He can play on any course. He can compete in any field. He is definitely a scorer. We saw that last year in the Corn Ferry. Uh, obviously, no no record here to speak of, but he's a par five scorer. I'm all about Scotty Scheffler, and I love the value at 9,500 on DraftKings. Um, I, I'm not going to be betting a whole lot of guys in this, and I normally don't in the short, you know, the, the short range. I mean, Adam Long won last year at like 400 to one. Um, you know, Hudson Swafford won here. Bill Haas won here. Jason Duffner. Uh, Brian Gay is one here. So you can get long shots that come out and win, and I think that's something that another birdie fest uh, kind of scoring conditions will do for you is it brings a lot of people. It brings everybody into the field. You know, bombers, short players, guys who don't score, guys who do score, whatever. Uh, it, it brings everybody in the field because anybody can get hot for one week. Uh, so I like Scheffler a lot in terms of a pick to win, but I, I'm not going to bet the odds, but I do like him in DraftKings at 9,500. I'm gonna go up from there, and obviously, you know, I think I think Kisner is is in play here at 9,900 on DraftKings. We saw the T4 finish, obviously played well at the Tournament of Champions as well. So he's hot and ready, ready. Like, you know, I mean, he's just he looks good right now. He's 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 in form. He needed a few putts to drop over the weekend. They just weren't dropping, but the ball striking is almost as good as it could be right now. Uh, he has played here with no real great you know, finishes to speak of, but tremendous Bermuda putter and a sneaky good scorer on par fives. You know, this is a lot about wedges too. Kisner's a great wedge player uh, like him. I'm going to go up to Char uh, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm going to go up to Sung J M at 11,000 as, uh, as my next play. I'm going to keep riding Sung J, you know, 21st last week, kind of fizzled o over the weekend, but first time here last year, finished 12th. Um, third in this field in strokes gained par five scoring over the last hundred rounds. Also putting well on Bermuda. I mean, Sung Jay, what 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 are you going to do with Sung Jay? He's just he's just a stud. But I am I am still going to mention Charles Howell because I'm I'm copping out and working him in here as a pick in my cash pick. So if you're going to pick a cash player, it's going to be Charles Howell. He's never missed a cut here. He's played here. Uh, he's I don't know. He's played here like fifteen times. He's never. He's never missed it's a like, cut. It's like it's Sony Open. I mean, he was a leading yeah. money winner at the Sony Open, and he's never won. He's, he's, a, he's the leading money winner, but has never won. That's I mean, he's in good form. He's you know this is not you know he played in Hawaii. Uh, obviously enjoys this golf course, so I think he's a cash lock, and I think that's a pretty simple. I mean, he'll probably be thirty five percent owned or something in cash lineups, but um, I think he's your cash lock. 
And, you know, like last week, I'm fading Ricky. I mean, he's not – I'm going to fade the top guy, which last week I faded Justin Thomas, paid off. Um, but I'm definitely not willing to pay. If I'm not going to pay $500 more last week for JT coming off a win with a great record at Sony, I'm definitely not paying 11 5 for Ricky. You know, I understand – top five at the, at the tournament of champions, but, uh, it's still Ricky. He's not, he's not a winner and I need him to be a winner right here. Um, this is not a super strong field because we didn't mention this, but obviously you got a lot of studs at the Abu Dhabi right now. Tommy Fleetwood, Brooks Kepka, uh, Cantlay. Uh, then you got kind of average players like Bryson DeChambeau at the Abu, uh, Abu Dhabi and getting ready for the middle East swing. So, you know, the, the field is not quite as strong uh, this year, as we've seen in years past, so I, I think I think Fowler's an easy fade for me um, in in this range. So there you go. Nice. Okay. Well, and and our our boy Francis on YouTube says currently the weather looks like no issue. So thank you, Francis. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. By the way, uh, just just for uh, maybe just for you, I know I know your son uh, is a big Clemson fan. Clemson did score first in the game, so they are up seven to nothing. Uh, okay. In case anybody wants to know the live listeners on YouTube. Uh, anyway, so I'm with you on the Ricky Fowler fade, actually. I, I, I kind of, uh, I just don't know if I want to pay up for that. And if you look at just the way this tournament, I mean, literally, you mentioned it, and I talked about the past winners here, just on down the line. I mean, there's, it's just anybody can win this tournament. I, don't, I just don't Yeah, why are you going to play the top guy when Adam Long won last year? Yeah, and I like I do like Sung J M, but actually I think he could make a case almost outside of Charles Howell of fading everybody over this two totally. K range. I totally and agree. Charles is my cash play, so for reasons you said, so I will go ahead and throw that out there. But but my three GPP plays are all. This is where I kind of said I might get a little weird this week. They're all at the bottom of this range. I'm going first off Cam Cam Champ at ninety three hundred. <laughs> I know he's been, you know, kind of off and on, but we've seen some good recent form. We saw him win in the fall. Uh, he, he finished, you know, 14th of the Tournament of Champions, which is not that great in a field of 30 people. But when you look at his just stats overall, I mean, obviously he's number one off the tee, but he's 11th in par five scoring in this field. He's And, and, and you mentioned, you know, going back on par five scoring the last 100 rounds. So, He's 11th in par 5 scoring over his last 20, 24 rounds, but he's also top 10 in the field over his last 100 rounds in par 5 scoring. So he checks the box there. He's 15th in opportunities gained. You know, actually, you know, Bermuda is his best surface when it comes to putting. So I like some Cam Champ at 9,300 this week. And, and look, we know, I just think he's going to take advantage of these par 5s, and that's really what I'm looking at. So I do like him. Going with another young gun at the bottom range of this range at nine thousand, Matthew Wolf. I like oh, you said well. Wolf. You said Wolf. Normally you say Wolf. Good that job. Maybe means it's going to be a good week. Uh, but he was eleventh at the Tournament of Champions in Hawaii. We talked about you know guys that have won it or played well in Hawaii or played in Hawaii, doing well at this event. So he definitely checks the box there. Uh, you look at the stats for him. Um, you know he's. He's sixth. Well, let me go. First off, he's second in opportunities gained. He's top 30, 40 in birdie or better percentage. He's top 30 in strokes gained, par five scoring. He is sixth in proximity from a 75 to 100 yards out. Let me tell you where that stat came from. I got to give a shout out to our boy Pat Mayo. He tweeted it out today that the last three winners have been top 10 in the field in proximity from 75 to 100 yards out. So I think that's I hate that proximity stat, by the way. I hate that stat. I like it because when you're looking at, they're going to have a lot of those wedges into these. There's a lot of short par fours out here because it's not a very long course. So I think I just I like that stat and the fact that it, that it showed up in the last three winners, I think is is something that is is interesting. You know, obviously if you're hitting it close, you're giving yourself chances for birdies, and that's what you got to have this week. So I do like. So Matthew Wolf at nine nine thousand, and then another guy who we haven't seen a whole lot of lately, but did have a fantastic year last year, and that is Jason Kokrak at ninety one hundred. Okay, I kind of like the well. Kokrak pick. I looked at him. Yeah, I think Kokrak is a great great pick. The old um, cokehead. Yeah, you know he's uh, he's got pretty good course history here. When you look at the last two years, was eighteenth last year, T eighth in two thousand and eighteen. Um, 
He also checks the box in that proximity stat I mentioned. His last event we saw him play in was the WGC HSBC Championship, which is a short field event, but he finished eighth in that tournament. So I do like some co at 9,100. My fade is going to be Tony Finau. Yes, Tony Finau at 10-5. You know what? He hadn't played here since 2016 when he missed a cut. He was T-59 in 2015. Uh, you look at his stats. I mean, they really haven't been all that great recently. Um, you know, he's I don't mind Fino, but he's one hundred twenty-first in the field in par five scoring, a hundredth in that proximity stat. I just, I don't know. The form really hasn't been there. I mean, I mentioned that I really just like the guys that are in great form heading into the week. Um, he was tenth at the Hero. There's like. 20-something guys on that tournament. No, there's 17. There were 17. S- sorry, 17 guys. He missed the cut at the OHL and was T53 at the WGC HSBC. So, I, I don't know. I mean, he did have, I think, a pretty good finish a few weeks before that. But I'm just not, I'm not, I, I think his ownership's going to be too high, and I'm not feeling the Tony Fino. <clears throat> what are you laughing at now? Like, this is what I hate about this video. <laughs> I'm laughing at your brother. <laughs> Pat's twin brother, everybody, Chris Perry, Direct TV Perry, on the on the live broadcast on YouTube, just said the YouTube cam is not too kind to the top of Pat's head. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't know, Chris, is before this, Pat was really struggling on whether to wear the hat or not tonight. He was like, "I don't really like my hair." He's like doing this. I don't. And he tried the hat on. He's like, "Oh, I don't know." And he's like, "Oh, well, okay." And he just decides to go with it. So now he's See, when now we he's started in... again. I, we talk about this all the time, but when we started this <laughs> podcast thing. There was no talk about. I should have put it in the contract that I wasn't going to be on camera as much. So now we're putting on this little thing. Uh, that, that's I didn't do anything for the top of your head. <laughs> now we'll do this. We'll do some of this. Well, if you if you would have refused that, then I would have just I would have just started the podcast with your brother. I would have just done that. I mean, you just kind of you just kind of sprung it up on me, you know, all of a sudden with the whole video thing. So there you go. Yeah, like eight months ago. <laughs> it was literally eight months ago. All right, um, let's let's keep moving to the eight K range. I really like this spot right here. I think this is uh, well. I don't know. We'll see. I, I plan on getting a little ownership leverage here. You know, we talk about in tournaments on DraftKings, you have to have the ownership leverage. Um, we had some this past week and it paid off. Hopefully you guys did too. Uh, we, we had it primarily in Henrik Norlander and, um, uh, yeah. So a couple other guys, but anyway, uh, let's, let's get going. 8,900. I like, we're going to give you two tournament plays, a cash play and a fade. Um, I really like JT Poston to bounce back here. He's at $8,500. He missed the cut at the Sony, but he was he, incredible form before that. Uh, finished seventh here last year. Checks the box in both strokes game putting on Bermuda. And actually, he's a pretty good par five score relative to this field. Uh, when you look at it last week, I mean, he just he just didn't putt normally last week, like he normally does. But but the, I just think that I just think there were some putts not dropping. I think the ball striking's there, um, and I feel like based on in in. Based on a little birdie, I just feel like JT could play well this week. I think this is a great course for him. He's got the he's got the right uh, kind of demeanor for a pro am like this. He's just an easygoing guy. Um, I think I think the postman's a, a good bounce back candidate after a miscut last week. Uh, and then I'm going to go with Brian Harmon at eighty six hundred dollars. Finished thirty second last week at the Sony. Um, a pretty solid record here, aside from the missed cut last year. But before that, a 20th, a 3rd, and an 11th for Brian Harmon. Another good putter uh, in good form. you know. And when he's hot, he's hot. So uh, I think I think Harmon at 8,600 is possibly another tournament play. I mean, he was 9% owned last week uh, in GPPs, and he gained strokes across the board, off the tee, approach, putting. He only lost barely like a quarter of a stroke. In, in chipping around the greens. But he's been playing very solid lately when you look at his form. Outside of the OHL and the Houston, uh, the guy's been playing really, really well with some top 10s, uh, top 20s. Uh, I, I really like Brian Houston here in tournaments, and I think him and Poston will give you some some leverage for sure. Uh, and then in terms of a cash play, I'm going to go with Russell Knox. I, I thought about – I think Knox is going to be pretty chalky in tournaments, but I'm willing to play him in cash – 
Um, you know, he's playing well, good record here. Obviously, uh, you know, can 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 fit this course well. He he didn't score like I thought he would do last last week. He gained a lot of strokes with the irons, had a lot of opportunities, didn't make the putts. Um, but I, I, you know, again, a guy who played Hawaii last week. So I think Russell Knox is interesting uh, for cash. And if you want to play him in a tournament, I'm not going to hate you. I just don't think you're going to get the leverage with Russell Knox that you do with Poston and Harmon. And I think both of those guys have equal or better upside as Russell Knox does. So, And then my fade is going to be a guy with an incredible course record here, uh, and that is Lucas Glover. I'm just, you know, mm. I'm going to go back to the – Man, that's got to be tough for you. It's a tough fake because I do like Lucas Glover, and I usually play Lucas Glover. Man, this is just like a course that he just should he tear dominates. Off. Yeah, he does. He dominates so. it again, though. Like if if you're going off the if you're going off the the form piece and playing in Hawaii piece, um, you know, then then you know Lucas doesn't doesn't quite check the box there. So. Now, last you know, last year he played the RSM and he skipped everything, and then he played the the Amex um, or whatever it was called last year. So I don't know; it could be it could be different, but I'm going to take a chance, you know, and a, a potential chalk Lucas Glover. Now, listen, I don't care what the course is, I don't care what his form is. A chalk Lucas Glover is usually a play you want to avoid in tournaments, okay? Because he could he can trunk slam with the best of them. Home life could be piss poor with Lucas with with any of them. The putting could be. I think it's been better. I think it's been better. Yeah, Home life the putting been could be I mean. traditional Lucas Glover. You can go on tilt with him. So a chalky Lucas Glover, I don't want. Now maybe he won't be chalky, but I think he could be, considering the price and yeah. and that that history. Okay. So there you go. Well, we got some agreement here in this this category. So I'll 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 cover that first. I'm with you on JT Poston. I think he is a good play this week. Um, my cash play is Russell Knox. I mean, just the way – I mean, checks all the boxes as far as stats are concerned. Course history, his form is good, so I'm with you there on Knox. Um, I'm going to continue to ride Alex Noren at 8,400. You know, I like I, it. Here's I like the thing it. about Noren is he's going to continue to have lower ownership, but as I talked about last week when I took him, he is playing a lot better. Um you know, there was some word that he might have been a little bit injured last year, and he's obviously gotten over that. Um, you know, you look at the stats, he's 21st in par-5 scoring. He's top 20 in birdie or better percentage. Um, you know, he was literally last week, he gained seven and a half strokes tee to green. The only thing that really was kind of killing him was his putter on Bermuda. But traditionally, Bermuda is Noren's actual – it's actually his best surface. So – I'm going to continue to go with with some Alex Norn. I like the price at 8,400. So, for tournament lineups, I would definitely go with him again. Um, I, I think he could have easily had a much better finish than that T32 he had last week at the Sunny Open. So, he is my other play in this category for the uh, as a GPP here. I, I, I like the Norn play. I mean, if I didn't have to choose two, he would have been my third. So, I'm with you there. Wow. You didn't like him last week, but you liked him this week. No, 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 no. You hated that play. But, you know, I think he's going to take some getting used to. I just he's, he's Well, here's what we know about Norin. He he wants to play more on the PGA Tour. He's, he's committed yeah. to that. You mentioned the injury last year. He, I think he's clearly proven that he's bounced back from that. He's such a grinder. He's such a grinder. And it's a Ryder Cup year. He was on the last Ryder Cup team. I think he wants to make it on this Ryder Cup. Um, I think that's something to consider for Alex Norton. I think he's going to give it his best effort. Um, and I, I, you know, he's obviously a talented player. We've seen him play really well, so yeah, I don't mind it. Okay. What else you got? Ready to... That was it. Oh, oh okay. my fade! I didn't, Your fade. I didn't talk about my fade. My fade. This is this is this breaks my heart to do this, but I just feel like it has to end at some point. So You're, I'm going to fade Brendan. Brendan Todd. Todd. I knew I knew it was happening. Brendan Todd. I, I, I got to. And look. I Why mean, did you pick Brendan Todd over, like, okay, what do you think about, okay, well, go ahead and tell me about Brendan Todd. Why are you going to fade Brendan Todd? Well, for one, it's just the price I don't like. I, you know, at 8800 I just, I, I worry. You liked him last that. week. He was more expensive than that. Yeah, but I, I just like the course, that course a little better for him. And I don't know. It's, I mean, it's, it's a scoring like, fest. It's just, 
it's a birdie it's just fest. The thing. I mean, yeah. Brendan Todd is just. I mean, every week he's coming to play, but there's got to be a week where he's going to fall off a little bit. His ownership's, you know, going to be, you know, it's it's just increasing probably week after week. Um, he he actually doesn't, even though he has been playing well. When you look at the stats, they don't exact. I mean, nothing's really showing up as being all that great. I mean, he's 88th in the field in par five scoring. He's He's uh, 82nd in that proximity stat. He's 82nd in opportunities gain. Um, I don't know. I just, I just feel like this is the week to fade Brendan Todd, and he gets so much talk. And I, I it's making, this is definitely a gut feeling yeah. kind of out there call. Um, but that's what I think a fade should be. I don't think it should be. I'm fading uh, some easy name to fade. What do you think about Phil? The, 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 the host. By the way, so Phil, Fowler, and Finau are the hosts this week. Why is, right, so this is, why is Finau this is, hosting this event? What, and what does that even mean? I don't even know what it means to be the host of an event. <laughs> like, what, what does that mean? And is it because, like, maybe you have, I mean, is, are they sponsored by American Express, maybe? Is that... Like I don't know. I mean, you mentioned it. Finau hasn't been here since 2016. Why is he the host? But I guess I mean I'm not saying that. I don't know, but I don't understand. So we're we're I'm sitting here looking at Mickelson, but I I read I don't think he's playing this week. I heard yeah. he was he was just the host, but he said he's not he's not playing this week. Yeah, he's playing. Huh? No, I read an article on the PGA Tour website. I will cite it. That no. said he's not playing this week. What? Are you serious? Maybe I was reading an old article. <laughs> I could have been reading an old article. <laughs> that is entirely true. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm pr- yeah, he's playing. He's playing. He's playing. Okay. Yeah, what are you thinking? Anyway, I mean, now that you know he's playing, have you thought about whether or not you would take Phil here? I mean, he's he's a scorer. You're guaranteed to get 54 holes. He's obviously got a record here. He's comfortable here. Are you going to play him? Oh, here's the deal. So I read this wrong. <laughs> yeah, we all knew that well before you did. So yeah, he is playing. Hmm. I read it wrong. There's only there's one word. In, reading comprehension, maybe not. And I really didn't do that well in the SAT. <laughs> in reading comprehension. The SAT. Lord God. I'm um, not gonna play him. You're not. What? I yeah. Think, I just I don't know. I'm. I'm <laughs> I just. It's, Phil is not playing that great lately. Okay. Um, all right. Why don't you? I mean, oh, uh, you know, th- this this tournament like it always just gets me because you kind of want to be a cowboy with it, right? And you know, because you're guaranteed the 54 holes, and you need scorers, which Phil is. Um, I don't know, like if he's projected under five percent, which he probably will be, like unless unless Pat Mayo talks him up, he'll be f- under that. Like I. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like I don't know. It would. Be, I'll, I'll give it a. I'll give it a glance. Come Wednesday, I'll give it a glance. It's just tempting. Okay. The scoring potential. Okay. All right. Why don't you uh, start the seven K with three tournament plays, a cash lock, and two fades. By the way, I meant to mention JT Poston is fifty to one on my bookie. Fifty to one. That's kind of where I'm starting to look. JT Poston fifty to one. All right, hit us with the seven okay. K, and any other bets. Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with my fades in this range, and it is literally the exact same fades that I took last week, and it's Kevin Na and Aaron Wise. Aaron Wise is playing absolutely terrible right now. He's missed. I, thought I took the Aaron Wise fade. No, we both did. No, okay. I thought. Maybe I know I, I did. You. Okay, well, maybe I didn't. Are you anyway, trying to steal my picks? Is that what you're trying to do? Go, we have the, you even tweeted out, you can look at the tweet. I think I did fade him. Anyway, so I'm going with Aaron Wise. Has not been playing well at all. He's missed his last three cuts. He missed the cut the last time he played here on this tur- at this tournament. Um, yeah, we both you know, faded him. You're right. Yeah, so, I mean, the stats look okay. I mean, he actually does check the box in par five scoring uh, and birdie or better percentage, but I just don't like, you know, I think form is, is huge this week going into this, you know, to be able to score, do all that kind of stuff and whatever. It, it's just, I'm not, I'm not 
feeling some Aaron Wise, so I'm going to fade him this week. And then Kevin Nye, we don't know. Maybe he's going to withdraw. That's what happened last week. So. He's got this ongoing um, neck injury. I mean, he's yeah. there for me, too. He, he's got this ongoing neck injury. He's – he's I mean, well, I mean, we fade, we both faded him last week, but then I placed a bet on him because I knew that, like, something weird would uh, we happen. Did that during the show. I and the bet, got, the bet got – kicked back because it, he didn't start which is good but he's got this ongoing neck injury i don't know what he's doing man i guess he's just trying to play it by ear and feel so yeah i mean I, it's it's an easy fade but it's a fade that we would want to go on the show and make sure no one plays him like there's just no yeah <laughs> and like we did last week play it you make a bet on him so just make the bet and yeah then, and then if he doesn't start they'll kick it back to yeah, you but if he does start he'll probably win the damn thing yeah it all yeah so just do that Okay. Uh, as far as the plays I love this week, though, for GPPs, I'm going to start with Von Taylor at the top 7,900. I mean, the guy's just been playing fantastic. He was seventh here last year. Uh, you look at his last three events, T12 at the Sony, T10 at the RSM, second at the OHL. So I love the form that he's coming in with this week. Checks the box and birdie your better percentage, also opportunities gained. Um, you know, I just think, it's it's hard to fade a Von Taylor when he's in good form and on a course like this where almost anybody can win and do well. I like some Von Taylor there at that All right. price. Um, Question on Von Taylor because I I like him too. Okay, what ownership in a tournament would Von Taylor have to be at for you to fade him? Um. I'd probably say if he was. Over maybe like 12, 13%, somewhere like over there. And he <laughs> consistently is usually around like a 5 or 6%. I do know the last couple tournaments he's been around 10 or 11, I think. Um, but I'm okay. I'm still okay with 10, that percentage. But anything over like that when he's push, pushing into like a 15% range or something like that, I think I would then fade him in the tournament. Well, I, th I think, I mean, I feel like you're going to have to fade him because, I mean, coming off the T12 at the Sony, and you're right, at the Sony he was 11% owned. The week before that he was 11% owned. So now he's coming off a T12, um, $7,900. I, I bet Vaughn Taylor is some chalk down here in this range. I, I think he's going to get, I think he's going to approach that 15% range in tournaments. And, and, if, I, and he I, is, I, if he is, then, then I'll... Yeah, I'll I maybe end up fading him, but it, right now, as it stands, Monday night, I still like him in tournaments. Yeah, and I and I only um, ask that question because it's Von Taylor. Like I agree with you, I I like him. All signs point to Von being, you know, solid here. But again, it is Von Taylor. Like he's not he's not, you know, he's not a, a, a stud, right? So like a chalky Von Taylor is something that I don't mind getting off of. Uh, if if he's going to be fifteen percent owned, I will I will fade him. Now I may I may throw a little half unit on him to to win or you know some something on a top five, um, but I do think I, I do think at fifteen percent he, he may be worth the ownership leverage uh, to or the ownership edge to fade him and, and gain gain a little edge on the field because I do think he's going to be fifteen percent. But I, I I I agree with you. I like him for the reasons you mentioned. So I just wanted to yeah. stop and, and talk through that. And and maybe you even look at him as a as a cash play. I don't know. But, yeah, I'll play in a cash um, for sure. Yeah. So anyway, I do like him. I also like Harris English at seventy seven hundred. I, I think you know he's another guy that's sort of flying in a little bit under the radar this week. Has a good tournament history here. He's gained eighteen strokes in the field over the last three times that he's played here. He finished eleventh in two thousand eighteen. 51st last year, but then I had a top 30 in 2015. I'm, 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 I'm good with that. Um, you know, you look at his recent results. He did miss the cut at the RSM, but he was fifth at the OHL. So, um, obviously, is, you know, he's a guy that's kind of hit or miss. Um, but I still think this is, this is the type of course that he can play well. And he's checking a lot of boxes for me. You know, you look at um, he's third in birdie or better percentage. He's top 30 in the field in par five scoring, top 30 in strokes gained approach. I think Harris English could have, have just a good week for him. So I do like him as a, as a tournament play. Down at the bottom, HV3 at 7,000. I think this is a, a, a good week for him. Um, 
you know, he is looking at the stats. Um, actually, when you run, and I hate talking about this because I don't really like, I'm not a model guy, but when you look at all my favorite stats, he's actually number one. He's 23rd in strokes gained off, or strokes gained off the tee. He's 15th in par five scoring. He's fifth in proximity from 75 to 100 yards. He's top 20 in birdie or better percentage, top 20 in opportunities gained. You know, HV3 is a scorer. We know that. And, I mean, when you get him on a course that that's what, what you got to do is have birdies and eagles and whatever else. Now, he may he may have some big numbers, but that's typically what we see out of, out of some HV3. So, I do like him this week. Um, now, look, his first three years playing this tournament, not so good. Missed the cut. Last year, though, he did have a T18 finish. So, you know, obviously may have figured something out. Um, I don't know. That could have been the rotation of the courses for him. I am not sure. But I still like HV3 as, a, as just a low-owned tournament play uh, this week. Um, what else? I mentioned my fades. Your cash I'll go, with Zach, I'll go with Zach Johnson for my cash play. I'm big on Zach this year. I don't know why. It's like you last year. Yeah, like we've... He's just, I'm just, we flipped. But, I mean, look, he's had a top 30 here the last two years. He's in good form. Um, he's I, mean, I don't hate it. He's a wedge. It. He's a wedge guy. I don't hate it. Played in yeah, played in I mean, Hawaii. It's just, I, I'm, I think he's just a solid cash. Throw him in your lineup. Not gonna miss a cut type guy. He he can score. It's not like he can't score. So yeah, I like some Zach. It's not very exciting. On a uh, is not that like you probably just fell asleep when I mentioned the word Zach Johnson. No, I was asleep long before that. Um. There's a, I, I'm shocked we don't have we don't have more more of the same guys here. Um, I tried to be a little, you know, I didn't want to take other than my fades, which were the same ones I took last week, I think. Um, well, okay. I mean, I, I I did have Vaughn Taylor on the short list. I will say that he's on the short list. But uh, in terms of, of guys making the cut for me, I'm going to go down at the near the. I'm going to start at the bottom. Um, I'm going to get back oh, on wait, Can I mention this? I have, yep. a, I have a sneaky bonus play. So if you mention this guy's name, okay. I'll do something. I'll like make fall out of my chair or something like that. I, that I probably, that. I don't think I will. Uh, I'm going to go back to Henrik Norlander. We talked him up last week. He finished ninth. Um, he's $7,100. He's played here a couple times. Now, the only thing that concerns me about Henrik is um, he gained eight strokes putting last week. <laughs> which is insane. Normally, Henrik is an exceptional ball striker. Very good ball striker. Very good iron player. Um, good off the tee. I, I kind of see that coming back for him. Great attitude for something like a pro-am. Fun fact, Henrik is a member at the club that I am a member of. Um, and I see Henrik a good bit. Uh, he's, a, he's a great dude. Great Very, very low-key. Uh, great attitude for something like this, and and putts well on Bermuda. Um, so I, I kind of I'm going to go back to Henrik. I hope the putting stays the same, and I hope the ball striking picks up a bit. Then I'm going to go with a guy <laughs> that I make fun of you for, who missed the cut last week by one shot, Mr. Bud Colley. Bud <laughs> Colley. It's seventy three hundred dollars. Bud Colley. He did miss the cut last week, okay? But he missed the cut, again, on the number. Well, he missed, he missed it at two over. The cut was one over. His best putting surface is Bermuda when you look uh, over his career. Everything last week he did pretty – he's like the Geico commercial. You know, the new Geico commercials right now are like everything's okay, like everything's just okay or like average or whatever it is. Like that's Bud Cawley. He's like, hey, look, I'm going to hit my driver okay this week. You know what? I'm going to hit my irons pretty – Daggum okay. And I'm gonna putt pretty average. And I'm pretty gonna miss daggum a, okay. I'm gonna miss a cut by a stroke at the Sony. But that's the first time we've seen Bud play since October at the Houston Open. So the rust got sh you know got got shaken off a little bit. But when you look at, at his, you know, at his summer and, and start to the year, I, I like what Bud has to offer. Um and, you know, he's played here very, very well. In four years, he's gained 28 strokes at this golf tournament, and that's with a missed cut last year. But before that, two 14th place finishes and a third. So I think Bud is interesting. He gained strokes on par fives. 
Um, and I really like the I really like the price at seventy three hundred. He is he's one I'm taking a look at. Um, and then I'm gonna go to a guy who I got on late last week, and he did okay. He didn't do great. Uh, he was in the chalk bomb email. He's seventy five hundred dollars. He's a proven PGA Tour winner, and it's Daniel Berger, who we saw finish thirty eighth last week at the Sony. Um, Berger played here last year, finished 12th. Uh, we know Berger can score when he gets hot. Not a bad putter either on uh, on Bermuda surfaces. So uh, I think Berger's interesting at 80 to one. I think you're going to get some you're going to get some leverage. Um, and he was like 10 percent owned last week. Kind of was just benign. I, I don't see that percentage going up at all this week. Uh, so I like Berger at 80 to one and at 7500 dollars. I also like Norlander at 110 to one on my bookie. Um, I think I think that's another interesting number. Cash, I'm going to go with Rory Sabatini. I'm going to get back on the Rory Sabatini train. He checks boxes. Played here before. He's in good form. No sense why he couldn't play. He couldn't play well here. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to roll with with Rory in cash and my fades. I wrote down Kevin Knox because you have to, and then I wrote down Brendan Steele. Mm. Uh, the oh, I I agree with you. I almost I was a little. I gotta say I gotta give you props. I was a little too nervous to throw him out there as a fade, um, but I think, and, and he actually has some good course history here too. So I give you a little prop, give you some props here for that. Okay, so I say good course history. He finished what? Oh, anyway, oh he's, he's he's got really good history here. I mean, over the last five years, he's he's gained like thirty something strokes on the field over the last five years. Great history yes. here. Now, so, but here's the thing about so first of all, I think he was he was pretty. I don't know if you saw his post round interview um, last night, but Brendan was bummed. He was bummed, Brendan. First of all, second of all, we all we all know what I think about his golf swing. It's it's the baby yeah, giraffe. You can't stand it. I yes. hate that guy's fucking golf swing. Um, I just hate it. Last week he gained six shots. He gained six strokes on the putting surface. Uh, the last time he gained six or more strokes on putting was the Arnold Palmer in March of last year. Before that, you have to go back another year to the waste management of 2018. I mean, the guy just doesn't gain. He does not normally putt that well. Um, I, I just, you know, and coming off of, coming off of that, that near win, maybe he gets a bump in ownership. I just, but I'm not, I'm not buying it. So my bold fade here, if I'm going to give you a Kevin Na fade, I got to give you a little bit of a more bold call. I'm going to say Brendan Steele. So, Tournament plays are Norlander, Cauley, and Berger, and I'm going to go Sabatini and Cash. Yes. Um, any any six K guys you like? What's your strategy here in the six K? Are you gonna Are you gonna play a lot of six K guys? You going more balanced? You talked about fading. You know, you can kind of fade the the ten K and above range in tournaments. Um, how many of these guys know, do you I think you're going to get into? I don't. I don't hate uh, a lot of the, the 6k guys i think there's actually some definitely you know some good plays here um you know i, I think i don't know um i'll give you my favorites though. one is matt naismith at 6700 i think he is what a, dude wait a minute what there's something there <laughs> there's something there's something with that okay okay there's something so with first, that he, I, right, I don't think either one of us have ever mentioned him on the podcast, but me and you, I, we, I, 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 I had him, have. I had him circled too. Yeah, he's he's one of my favorite plays here in this range. You know, he's made three straight cuts. He's and he's he's sorry, actually, yeah, three straight cuts. He was thirty second last week at the Sony. He was fourteenth at the RSM. He checks the box. He was seventeenth. He's seventeenth in par five scoring. He's top 50 in the field and birdie or better percentage. He is a scorer. If you looked at him, if you watched him, I've watched him for a couple of years now on the Corn Ferry Tour. Um, a guy out of South Carolina, he's a Gamecock. So North Augusta, right, right down the street. Yeah, but he is a scorer and a guy that's been playing well lately. So I like him at 6,700. I think he's a good play. Um, another guy at 6,500, I'm going to go even cheaper on you, is uh, Scott Harrington. Has actually been playing extremely well. He's made six straight cuts, including a second at the Houston Open in the fall. Uh, another guy that just could pop out of nowhere like an Adam Long. 
I think Scott Harrington definitely could be a, a, a good play this week. Um, you look at um, the stats for him. He's eighth in the field in par five scoring. He's 30th in birdie or better percentage. He's uh, 12th strokes gained off the tee, 43rd in strokes gained approach. So I like some Scott Harrington at 6,500. And then my flyer play pick, the guy I've got no reason to play whatsoever when it comes to stats and things like that is going to be Kevin Chappell at 6,700. Hey, he's he's the guy that I'm. If I'm just like looking for somebody to fly, it's going to be. You very just saw low. the name in 6700, and you wigged out. No, he is. Look, he's a name play. That is a name play. But when he's healthy, which he is now, he is a very good player. He was sixth here back in 2018 when he was healthy. Uh, so I do like some Kevin Chapel. That's a, that's a flyer play. I don't I don't need anybody chirping at me because I didn't throw any stats behind it and whatever else. He did have a 59, a 59 in the fall, by the way. Hey, uh, a viewer on YouTube, um, Josh, no, wait a minute, who was it? Zach asked a good question. Who's your 7K bonus play that you, you said you were going to mention, but I didn't mention? You were going to see if I if I said him, and then I, I don't know if I did or not. You had a 7K uh, bonus play. I do, yes. Uh, that was off the I mean, wall, you said. Let me find him. I mean, I, I know who it is, but I want to find what... Oh, okay. So he's missed this. This he's missed the cut twice here. He's only played here twice, so that's that's a good start. That's um, yeah. But at seventy six hundred, Denny McCarthy, he is number one in this field yeah. in strokes gained put, could, putting on Bermuda putt. grass. Yep. Yep. He is eighth in birdie or better percentage. He's twenty seventh in that proximity stat I mentioned. He has been in in pretty good recent form when you look at. Um, you know, he was eighth at the RSM Classic. Um, so I, I think he just he was just kind of a bonus guy that popped. Sort of yeah, I mean, game. Diddy McCarthy would be number one in this field. Strokes came putting on the kitchen floor. The dude's the he best, really is one of the fantastic. best putters in the field. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like I like Diddy. I, I I I was thinking your take would be a little more sizzling than that, but that's okay. We can we can, that's a, kind of a tepid take if you ask Sorry. me. Was, Has, hashtag tepid, tepid take. Um, all right. Well, for, I, I'm. There's a lot of agreement here. I mentioned Naismith. I meant you mentioned Harrington. I had him circled as well. I like Scott Harrington here. Um, I tell you what, I'll go. I'll go real deep here, and I'll I'll take you to a dude who finished 38th last week at the Sony. Before that, finished 23rd at the RSM, 41st at the OHL. He's a Corn Ferry grad, so he's obviously never played here before. Um, but he also checks the box in par five scoring. That is Chase Seifert at sixty three hundred dollars. He's also like two twenty five to one on my bookie. Chase Seifert gain strokes T to green last week like a madman. Gain strokes T to green the week uh, at the RSM. Um, before that, he is a a a scorer. He's a long hitter. He's sixty three hundred dollars and trending nicely. So Chase Seifert's kind of my kind of Matt Naismith equivalent there. Uh, but then I don't know how you avoid at $6,400 old man Stricker. Like, mm. how do you not play Steve Stricker here? It, it, 11th in strokes game putting on Bermuda surfaces. And shockingly, in this field, if you look over the last 100 rounds, strokes gain, strokes gain on par 5, Steve Stricker, 45th in the field. So just because he's a, he's a short knocker, doesn't mean he can't score on par fives. He hits those wedges. You know, I mean, he's a, he's a legend with the wedges. So uh, I think Stricker is a very interesting play. And if you look at the events that he does play in, I mean, he picks and chooses his spots. I mean, he, he doesn't have to play this week, but he, he picks and chooses. Um, you know, 22nd at the Memorial. Last week, last year, he went on quite the run in the summer. Well, 23rd at the Players, another Pete Dye design. 32nd, Charles Schwab. 18th, St. Jude. RIP, by the way, Pete Dye. Yeah, RIP, Pete Dye. 20th at the U.S. Open. Like, Steve Stricker has still got it in it, man. Like, the, the dude at $6,400, he's also 140 to 1 on my bookie. If Adam Long can win this golf tournament, like, Steve Stricker can win this golf tournament. I, I, I think Stricker is a very interesting play at 140 to 1. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw out Seifert. You mentioned Harrington Stricker. We have agreement on Naismith. Um, yeah, so 6K guys, there you go. I mean, 
I don't know that I'm going to find myself in the 6K range a ton this week, uh, even though I do understand, you know, we mentioned, you know, everybody's guaranteed three rounds, so you can get kind of aggressive here. Um, and but, but we also mentioned, like, the, the top is not very good. You know, I, I mean, I, d I did mention Sung JM. I don't know how much of Sung JM I'm going to have, but I'm going to have plenty of lineups where I start with Charles Howell, Kevin Kisner, Scotty Scheffler, the 8K range where I like, I mentioned Harmon, JT Poston. Like, I'm going to have plenty of those as well. And so I'm not going to go down to that 6K just because, but I do think that you can. Um, but I, I don't feel like you're, you're forced just because you get guaranteed three rounds in, in DraftKings tournaments. I don't think you're forced to do studs and duds. So, um, so don't be afraid to go a little more balanced, but still find your leverage in that 8K, 7K range and just, you know, go from there. So I like it. Yeah. You good? You know, last week's perfect DraftKings lineup would have been Cam Smith, Brennan Steele, Graham McDowell, who we mentioned, Webb Simpson, who I was on. I said you should fade JT and play Webb Simpson. Lato Griffin, who we were on. Ryan Palmer, who we were on. That lineup would have scored 612 DraftKings points, and you would have only spent $47,800, leaving some money on the table. Um there was a lot of drama at the Sony last week. You had, uh, man, I mean, you had JT, Patrick Reed, two guys, you know, for one and runner up at the at the tournament of champions a week before, both missed the cut. Um, you had, uh, you know, you had the drama on 18 with Brendan Steele uh, having to wait forever because Ryan Palmer hit a shank out of the bunker and then <laughs> Steele's relief, and then you had the playoff, and it was it, it was very interesting. Uh, a lot of drama on Sunday. I will say this. You and I had some sweats on Sunday. Um, hmm. Here's the thing. If you are playing GPPs on DraftKings or FanDuel or wherever it is that you're playing them, here's what you need to know. <laughs> there's a lot you need to know. There's, there's them, a, Especially if you're in the hunt. If you haven't learned the, the, the variance of this, of this little game that we're playing called Fantasy daily fantasy golf it is insane i was in first place in the 200 dollars single entry after saturday uh after friday and saturday mm -hmm. um going into sunday on the back nine as the leaders made the turn on the back nine i was in the top three very much in range of number one with plenty of holes left and colin morikawa um God, Sabatini, Knox. Sabatini, Jeff Knox, all just decided. <laughs> Jeff Knox. Or whatever. <laughs> Russell, Russell Knox. Knox. Jeff. Jeff Knox, local <laughs> Augusta legend. Uh, yeah, it, it all just went to the absolute crapper. Um, shout out to Marcus. He just sent, he just sent us $2 uh, if, I, if I relentlessly make fun of Pat for the next 30 seconds. All right, so first of all, I mean, literally he sent us $2 through YouTube. Thank you, Marcus. Wait, um, how can you send, send money through First YouTube? of all, Marcus, I don't know if you caught this earlier in the podcast, but Pat just learned today. It is January, what is today? January 13th, uh, 2020 years after our Lord and Savior, Jesus, that you can expand the, get the, the stickers and gifts and text on Instagram stories. Just learned, in fact, today he calls me and he goes, Dude, guess what? Or no, 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 no. Today earlier. he. We talked about this whole thing today. Earlier. I know, but Marcus wasn't here for that. And, but and wait, today wait, Mar is this Marcus that I play golf with? No, no, no. This is Marcus Miklovich, our boy Marcus. Okay, um, I was about to say if this is Marcus. He I just play told, golf he told me he's like, guess what? I and I said I said Pat, you know you can expand the gifts and the stickers on YouTube, and he goes what? And and I said yeah, you can expand those just like you can like the hashtags and all that stuff. He's like, no way. Yeah, like, yeah. So you know, Pat, poor Pat. Um, Pat was today years old, Zach Deaton says. Today years old when he learned that. Poor guy. Anyway, it was a tough back nine for yours truly uh, on Sunday. So if you're, if you're playing tournaments, just know that most people are losing money. Okay, so chin up, you know, Godspeed, do your thing. And uh, and get some ownership leverage. That's what you need. Enjoy enjoy the sweat though. Enjoy the happened, sweat because it, it's that's part of it. Um, you know, I was I was kind of the same way. I was going into the weekend after Friday. And after Friday, I had a lot of guys that made the cut. I had a lot of six of six lineups. So I was pretty happy. 
Uh, I was up there in the top five in Pat Mayo's contest, which we do on a, on a weekly basis. And um, and then Saturday was the day that screwed me. So at least I kind of got like put out of my misery a little bit earlier than you did. I got put out, you know, on Saturday. Now I still had a good profitable week, mainly because of getting so many six of six lineups. But um, it is part of it. Really, is the sweat is fun, man. I mean, I I, I want to win a lot of money. I do, but I do enjoy the sweat. So. It just yeah. happens. Um, yeah. That's why um, PGA DFS is great. Yeah. Uh, other than that, the only other announcements before we get to the chunk and run is I did mention the junior junkies that would be coming out last week. I did not put that out last week for other circumstances that got in the way. I will definitely get it out this week. So when the junior junkies video hits your YouTube page, we really, 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 really need you to share it. Need you to watch the video, share it. You know, it's cute kids, so show it to your kids. If you don't have kids, that doesn't matter. Just press play and then go do something else while it plays. Um, we need that thing to go go viral. So there you go, Junior Junkies. There's some swag in the shop for the Junior Junkies. Also, there's some new swag coming to the shop very soon, and we have very limited sizes because we just gave away a bunch of it. Uh, so if you see it, you better jump on it. If you're, especially if you're like a medium or a large, you better jump on it. I will say that. Pat, let's get to the chunk and run. Uh, we've gone on long enough. Let's get to the chunk and run. Uh, I'm excited about this one. I want to start though with the run portion tonight, which is two new to you. So they don't have to be brand new to everybody, but two new to you things that you are that, that you're enjoying in your life right now. So two new to you things that you're enjoying in real life. Pat, what are those things for you, bud? No, I want you to do it first. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, the first one is you know, you could you could say I'm I'm pampering myself. You could maybe call me back in the day, some would have called me a metrosexual. Um, but I am thoroughly at 36, just, just recently turned 36 years old. I am thoroughly enjoying a regular, as in monthly, massage and stretch from uh, Massage Envy, which is a national brand that you can yes, get. Yes, it is yeah. a brand, yeah. Yeah, na- uh, I am getting a regular, regular monthly massage and... <laughs> Josh Kistler. <laughs> Josh Kistler on ins- on uh, YouTube Live just said, Pat's two new things are his Instagram and his weenie. <laughs> uh, Kistler, when I ever see you in person, <laughs> I have to tell you something. You're taking one to the kisser. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Okay, and for, for those of you on YouTube asking, including Bill Brower, no, uh, Massage Envy is an up is an upstanding corporate entity, and there is no is there, such yeah, Asian is, Asian yeah. extras in there. It there may is, just be in the South, but it is a it's a chain type. Yeah, no happy place. endings. No happy I endings. I was going to ask you though because it is a chain. I mean, we're giving some free advertising here, but is it like legit? Like good, mas- good. It's good very massage good. Massage people. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, I, and I carry. A lot, I think I stress a lot because of you. Like, I'm always having to babysit you all the time like i carry a lot of stress up here you know what mm-hmm. i mean um and like they 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 know their stuff and the stretching i really underestimated the stretching what it would do for my body like how good it makes me feel and the, it's important it's very important i've been um, stretching in the shower this year so far or that is like disgusting i don't even want to I, that the mental picture you just gave no, thousands of people stretch, is unbelievable you, unbelievable very, as you get older the shower stretch is great Oh, yes. I mean, yeah. Oh, God. Are you? It's like we, I was listening to the. I was listening to uh, PGA Tour radio. They had the shark on. They had uh, you know Greg Norman and and we've all obviously we've all seen him naked before because he was in the ESPN body issue. Uh, but he said that he likes to work out naked. Now I don't do that because I don't have thank my own God, workout yeah. room that I can do that. Yeah. But stretching stretching in the shower has been a fantastic thing for me. <laughs> I've just started that recently. So. Anyway, go ahead. That's the side of the subject. 
Well, when you go, have you ever had a massage? Yes. Uh huh. Do you are are you a uh, you know when they, when they tell you to like get undressed to your own comfort level? What's your comfort level? Uh, I'm not. I'm not completely. No, I've got like boxers on at least. I don't okay. Mind a, no shirt, but I've got. Like, yeah, yeah. I've got at least some sort of coverage over the bottom level. Okay. Have you ever had any weird uh, massage experiences or encounters? Uh, no, because I really haven't had that many massages, so okay. I can't really. Okay. See. All right. Well, the second thing that I'm really. You, I mean, you just brought no. it up. Have you? Okay. No, I have. I, I, I have. I have actually not. Um, okay. I'll let. I'll let everybody know when I do. The second thing that I'm really enjoying right now that's new to me, and I know I'm 36, and I'm going to get made fun of for this, but I'm just telling you, it's very entertaining. And I mentioned it kind of in our New Year's resolutions. It's TikTok. Like I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying TikTok. I, I laugh at TikTok videos. I think it's funny. I see I see a lot of funny things on there now. I I can't post on there. I don't know how to post. Um, well, I mean, I, I can I can figure it out. I just don't. I feel a lot of pressure to post on TikTok because I'm not. I don't feel as creative as all those people. But I definitely get into TikTok. There is a Tour Junkies TikTok channel that I created. That's my TikTok. So you can follow us. That'd be cool. But I mean, we're not doing anything on it. But you can follow. Us. Maybe we will. It is a New Year's resolution of mine to get Pat to use TikTok. Um, but I'm just telling you from a pure entertainment, like consumer value, there's a lot of value with TikTok. Um, <laughs> Zach says he goes on there to watch all the big titty thoughts. <laughs> so yeah, those are the two new to me things that I'm enjoying right now in life. Okay. All right. So for me, I've got to, I'll start. Is it my turn? Yeah. Well, there's nobody else, and I just named two, so it's got to be your turn. I'm going to start with an honorable mention because this is a New Year's resolution, which I didn't want it to be like the New Year's resolution thing being the thing I'm most enjoying like these days. So, But I do have to mention that uh, the reading book thing. Um, is, reading book. Is my, the reading book thing. Reading a book. Reading <laughs> books is my New Year's resolution. And um, a good friend of mine recommended a book called Chantaram. Um, and I did not know when he recommended this book when, that it was 900 pages or almost a thousand pages. I mean, it's like, it's the, it's, it's the biggest book I've ever seen in my life. Like, I think it should count as two. I said I was going to read four this year. I think it should count as two, but it's a fantastic book. If you, if you haven't read it, Shantaram so far, it's a great book. I love it. So that's been kind of cool. A new thing in my life that I've liked is, uh, reading, books um but my two favorites right now i got the big green egg i've been wanting a big green egg for years to cook on uh if you're not clear on what that is google it whatever everybody knows what that is pat yeah it's a it's a it's a great thing to cook on so i've been cooking like crazy on my big green egg i love it and uh just trying to find out new recipes so by the way shout out if you got any good recipes that are fantastic yeah. or you know send them to me yeah. dm us at tour underscore junkies get us on instagram whatever I, I, i'm up for that and then another thing that i've discovered and i don't know why and this is cooking related as well the instapot this freaking instapot thing can i've do heard a lot about that lately i mean it's incredible like you just press a button and throw ingredients in there, and it, it's like you cook shit for hours. I mean, it's the, it's the greatest thing ever. I love the Instapot. Uh, tonight, I made white chicken chili in the Instapot. It was fantastic, and it took like, I mean, I just literally threw all the stuff in there and pressed the button. So, I, it's, you know, if, if you don't know me, you do, but uh, cooking is a big thing for me. So yeah, Pat's, like Pat's a good cook. That's a good cook. So those are two that. huge things that have just, I mean, green egg, everybody, I mean, those have been around forever. Instapot, I don't know how long that thing's been around. It's it's like a crock pot on steroids, so it's a pressure cooker and all kinds of stuff, and I, I love the Instapot. I literally feel like ever since I got one for Christmas, I've cooked on it like three out of yeah. seven nights of the week. We're, so we're losing live viewers on YouTube, but we do have some agreement on the Instapot take, so... 
good for you. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah, I, mean, I keep hearing about two. that. I keep hearing about that. I think I might need to get one. All right, let's let's wrap this up with the chunk portion, which is you know you had Patrick Reed breaking news last week. Uh, Patrick Reed sent a cease and desist letter from his New York attorneys to Brandel Chambly's representatives, telling Brandel to stop talking about him and defaming him as a cheater, which is completely ridiculous and yet another horrible move from Patrick Reed's PR team, if if there is such yeah, thing. Yeah, also as a, quite funny. <laughs> very funny. So we thought, all right, if we were going to send a cease and desist letter to a PGA Tour professional, who would we send it to? Why would we send it to them? Now, Pat, I had a hard time landing on one PGA Tour professional to send a cease and desist letter to. So I have a few. Do you have one? Did you did you you go to one? Why don't I you have start? One. All right, why don't I you have start? One. Uh, my cease and desist letter is going to Jordan Spieth. And oh, I did not see this coming. And I thought you were the is, Jordan Spieth apologist. Oh, no. Well, that's where we're going. It is a letter to him to stop sucking. Like, <laughs> I don't care what you have to do. I'm sending you a cease and desist letter. Stop sucking. Play well. Prove all these other people that hate on Jordan Spieth wrong. Do some do something in these golf tournaments and whatever and majors and so I I'm gonna send a cease and desist letter to to Jordan Spieth. Work harder on your game. I don't know. Just okay. Just stop sucking. All right. Well, uh, I, I've got a few here, and I'll I'll end I'll end with my most passionate cease and desist letter, and it's gonna be somebody you will never guess. I'm sending a cease and desist letter to. Uh, but I'll start with a few "quote unquote" honorable mentions here. Uh, first of all, this is a fresh one: Brendan Steele. I would send a cease and desist letter on him to just cease and desist swinging the golf club because I'm tired of fucking looking at it. It is is just the ugliest you thing are I've so ever seen. Triggered by his swing. It, I'm so tr- I hated it. I don't like watching him swing the golf club. Just stop swinging. Either stop, quit the game altogether and do something else or change your golf swing. That's what I would do. Uh, next, I'm going to send a cease and desist letter to two people uh, who I, I believe are fashion violations. Brian Gay is one. Uh, Brian Gay, I would send a cease and desist letter for you to stop dressing like it is 2005. He is egregious with his outfit selection. I don't know who's dressing him. I don't think his sponsors are big enough to care about what's happening with Brian Gay, but I'm tired of, of seeing the Brian Gay apparel on on uh, on, on the internet when I when he that's the only time he gets any any playing time is if you have like a, a PJ Tour Live subscription. But stop it. Along those lines, a guy who I, I've been picking lately, Rory Sabatini. The shirts that he was wearing this week that had they were like white with the blue. It looked like it like blue Gatorade spilled down the middle of his shirt, and then when you add to that the excessive accessories that he has—the bracelets, the wrist tattoos, the shark tooth necklace—I mean, I swear to you, he's in his forties and he has a shark tooth necklace. I swear to you, Rory Sabatini, he needs to stop. Um, Scott Stallings, I I like Scott Stallings, a friend of the podcast, bit on the show, but I'm tired of the body shaming. You know what I mean? Like, it, at this point, it's bullying. If you follow Scott is, on Instagram, that is so funny that you said that. Literally, that was one of them that popped in my head. Was like <laughs> Scott Stallings on Instagram. Like, just stop. I love the guy, but you're 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 yeah. you're ki- everybody. You're, you're killing making everybody. Feel bad. Nobody feels good watching that. Shit. Nobody feels good. I've actually lost weight recently, and I feel and like doing good. Yeah, garbage. When I look at Scott Stallings, he's got veins on veins. He's got like. Four percent body fat, and 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 the thing is, it's like it's not like he came on tour being a stud. He came on tour being a porker, and now he's this. Like, and so I follow him, and he's like, you know, he's 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 showing me his screenshots and he, of his workout, I and can't he's believe you said that. I the veins, that. like I I can't if I see another vein on Instagram, I'm gonna kill someone. Like cease and desist, Scott. Like just just stop. Okay, we you're show us an Instagram video of you, you know, eating a big fat burger for once, 
and then yeah. like you can go then go on with the other show stuff us your cheat day. Bit. Can we please see your yeah. cheat day? For Let's the love of day. God, can I see a cheat yeah. day? Can you swing by a Five Guys tomorrow? Maybe. Um, all right, I got one more before I get to the big payoff. Uh, Matt Jones, I would send a cease and desist letter to Matt Jones, and I would say you need to cease and desist not posting more pictures of your wife because <laughs> that is unacceptable. You know, I mean, like Matt, you should feel more secure. Okay, like be more secure in who you are and where you are, and just give the people what they're asking for, okay? Just cease and desist not posting more pictures of your wife, okay? Finally, the one that I feel the most passionate about, a.k.a. the one that I'm dead-ass serious about, okay? Um, we might catch some heat on this because this guy's very active on social media and uh, he is, he, there's, he's, you know, maybe he's a nice guy. I don't know. We've actually interacted with him before, and walked away. When he walked away, we looked at each other and we were like, that guy's a tool. Because he barely spoke to any, I don't know. I would send a cease and desist letter for a number of things to Zach Blair. Yeah, I, I think he should just cease and desist and then just like make him become like, like he can't leave his house. <laughs> Zach Blair in your... And if he ever mentions the butt club the ever again... The fucking butt club. If, if I have the to, butt club, the government should oh. sign his ass and like take him to jail. Is the because butt club? It's, it's like a Ponzi scheme. I mean, I think it's a Ponzi it's a, scheme. It is a Ponzi scheme. You yeah. haven't. He probably has investors in the butt club. Yeah. And and first of all, and they're sitting there like, when is this thing opening? Because we put thousands of dollars into the butt yeah. club. It. Yeah, it's going to open when skating rinks are popular again. I don't know, but I am tired of hearing of the Buck Club. First of all, why would you name it the Buck Club? Because all it ever sounds like is Butt Club. Okay, first of all, that's what it sounds like is b the Butt Club. Second of all, no one cares about your mythological World of Warcraft golf course that you're not going to build. Like, that thing is never getting off the damn ground. Yet, you are scheming, I don't know how many people, out of your merch... On the Buck Club, Buck Club, and I'm tired of hearing about it. Like I hate the Buck Club. You need to get a. You need to spend the money that you are spending on the Buck Club marketing and, and apparel line. That's that's never going to happen. You need to spend that money on first of all a haircut because your hair is ridiculous. First of all, second of all, if you could buy a personality, that would be another good investment. But you can't. So take that money and spend it on taking your wife on a date, maybe. Like, I can't even, I actually had to research that he has a wife. He is actually married. So he's got a wife. Um, so take her on a lovely date. Take her to a nice dinner, maybe some chicken. Um, and quit talking about the damn buck club that nobody's going to be a member of. There's going to be thousands of hats on Goodwill 20 years from now from people that got suckered into buying buck club swag. God. Zach Blair, uh, cease and desist. Just stop it. We interacted with him at the web event, and I, like, of all the guys we interacted with, like, talk about a guy that had the personality of this pin, and he's yeah. and he's making money on people buying Buck Club merch. Give I me a agree. break. Yeah, that was a good take. You did really well in that category. Good job, DB. Thank you. I just want Jordan Speed to play better. <laughs> so, that's all I <laughs> that's care. lame. All right, well, uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the Tour Junkies podcast this week. We appreciate you guys. Y'all are the best ever. We will be back next week for the – is it the Farmers next week? Is Tiger back next week? Yeah, Farmers. Tiger's back at Tory Pines. So. <laughs> That's going to be electric. Can't wait. Can't wait. Thanks for, uh, thanks for downloading. Thanks for listening. Be sure and subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Mayor Screens be green, folks. See ya. Junkies.